When I say NBA, you say break down. Break it down. Sure. 2010's a year. Okay. Break it down. year, the new decade. Welcome to the NBA Breakdown online video on whothemand.com, on the NBA Breakdown.com, and all over cyberspace. It's crazy. Dave Mandanka, Avi Stevenson, thanks so much for joining us. Gilbert, 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 what are you thinking? By now, you all know the story. Yeah, it's out there. Yeah, like uh, guns and and pretending, uh, you know, to, to shoot them and and hanging out with his buddies, you know. Yeah, and all this stuff. Well, Agent Zero has lost his mind. Yeah. Well, he, you know, the question is, what he, what was he thinking? He wasn't thinking at all. What did he expect to have happen, folks? If you happen to hurt by some crazy chance, get Agent Zero has been suspended indefinitely by the NBA for his whole concealed weapon guns in his locker room and man, I'm just, I'm, it's, it's disgusting, it really is. I mean, Agent Zero, Gilbert Arenas, you know, kids look up to athletes in general yep. and, and pro athletes have a hard time justifying their salaries and they're always under scrutiny yep. and there are all these things that are going against athletes as is. So don't make it easy for them and pull out this kind of stuff. You know, when David Stern, like, he levied this uh, suspension on Karinas' 28th birthday. Happy birthday, pal. But like, what goes through your mind, okay? You're bringing, like, unloaded weapons to, like, your locker room, okay? And, yeah, you have a little talk with a guy, like, a teammate about, like, a gambling dispute or something, a gambling debt, and then you pretend to, like... Yeah. Come on, man. Now, now his, his, uh, his, side, his side of the story yeah. was they were in his home in West Virginia and he decided that he didn't want them there anymore because of his children. So he brought them to the locker room to threaten other people's children. I'm sorry, is Gilbert like making like a trillion dollars a year? Can he afford to buy like storage space somewhere? Look at that. Why does he need guns? Listen, man, we know in the States. I'm not saying everybody. Four of them? He needs four guns? Why? I don't know. Come on, man. You got to like, you, you gotta recognize his position, yeah. or his status, and what he is, and who he is. And he's a professional athlete, and there's no reason why he needs to be carrying four concealed weapons. Well, think about it, Ali. Like, say, like you're, you know, you're working at your workplace, right? Then all of a sudden, like, a coworker brings like four loaded weapons. You know, it's just not acceptable. It's it just, it's just not. But I don't know, guys like Gilbert. I love Gilbert. I love his personality and stuff. But this is where he took the joke way too far. These, these athletes, some of them, they think like they're above the law. They think because they make all this money. I don't even think that they're thinking. It's just poor decision making. Yeah. It's not even any, there was zero thought put into this at all. He just acted on what came in his head and that was it. Poor decision making, wrong move, Gilbert, and now you're paying the consequence. Then you gotta understand this. This is serious. He's facing charges. He's potentially facing jail time. His career in the NBA could be all but lost forever. You know, they're talking, he's got 100, 111 million old to him by the Washington Wizards, four years left on that deal. That could be all gone. This you know, is huge. I totally agree, and good for David Stern for like having a firm stance on this. I know it took him a little while uh, to levy the suspension, yeah. but hey, well, he man, was going to hold off. He was, he yeah. was going to hold off and see what the authorities were going to do. But Gilbert's reaction to this whole thing, and you know, having fun in the huddle, pretending like he's shooting people, what are you doing? And twittering and blaming people and all this kind of stuff. I think Stern just said, "Enough's enough, Gilbert. We can't accept this. We got standards. This is the NBA. We got an image to uphold. You're out of here." So, how long do you think Gilbert is out? Like a year? Do you think two years? Is that too long? Or it, it, you know what? I, it's, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a too long in this because the, the, the maximum jail term is 20 years in all this. For each, you get one five year count for each weapon, right? Plus a twenty thousand dollar fine. So you know, two years isn't too long. Oh man, imagine being the Wizards right now, being like uh, the team itself, and th this team over the last few years has been terrible in terms of like the, the team chemistry, infighting, and now arenas doing sure. all this stuff, yeah. it's totally unnecessary, so I don't know, like, who knows how this thing will end, yeah. I don't know. Considering this was a squad a couple years ago that was considered a contender, one of the top teams in the Eastern yeah. Conference, that's now a thing of the past. Exactly. Well, you know what, let's move on to some uh, brighter news. Uh, Nate Robinson, your boy Nate. This guy was benched 14 straight games, all right? So Knicks head coach Mike D'Antoni says, you know what? Hey, Nate, I'm going to throw you a bone. Play against the Hawks in Atlanta. Let's see how you do. You know what the guy does? He drops 41 points on the Hawks in OT. 41. 
It was hilarious because uh, Nate's former Knicks teammate, Jamal Crawford, after the game, like he plays for the Hawks now, Jamal goes, I guess Nate had 14 games built up in him. <laughs> You know? quite funny. So what do you think? Uh, so for Nate, obviously, a big time moment. Sort of like, hey, D'Antoni, how do you like me now? Moment, right? Well, you know, I, the, the whole the, the whole situation with Nate when he got benched, and this goes right back to that whole you know New Jersey Mets thing when he tried to score in his own basket as far as I'm concerned. It goes all the way back to them. And you know, he, he was he fell out of the good books of Mike D'Antoni, and he was riding the bench for those 14 games I talked about. And there was a period of time where he's talking about, well, I want to get traded if they're not going to use me, and agents got involved, and all kinds of nonsense. And really what he had to do is shut his mouth, sit on a bench, and pay his dues. Yeah. He was in the wrong to begin with. Keep it shut. Yeah. And when you get your time to shine, you go up there and play. And I'm glad that he was able to do that. Now it's what he does next and what it continues. And that's really what it comes down to. Because yeah. obviously, if Gordon Allen scored 41 points, he's earned the right to play some more. For sure. For sure, and I just want to know, like, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall after that game, Dan Tony, I, what he said to Nate, was there any kind of discussion? Was Nate giving a little smile to Dan Tony, like, hey man, I told you so, type of thing. I'm curious, I'm just curious. You know what he said? Yeah. He said, see you in 14 games. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but uh, yeah, so Nate Robinson, that was a, yeah. a terrific performance. Good for him. And yeah, like being out that long, it's just amazing how like you would think that he'd be really cold and icy. But a professional the... basketball player, come on now. Go out there and play the game that you get paid to do, man. Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. All right, finally, congratulations, Chris Bosch. Raptors all-time leading scorer. He passed uh, Vince Carter, yes. Uh, against, uh, well, he's in, the, in that Spurs game. He passed Vince Carter yeah. for yeah. all time. So. He had 14 points going in there, yeah. and, he, and he achieved that, and he is now the Raptors' all-time leading scorer. So the record books and the Raptors' record books, it's got Chris Bosh's name all over it, and yeah. there's more, it's littered some more with Chris Bosh all over the place. That's right, and also it helps that the Raptors are playing some great ball recently. Like, uh, as of uh, Thursday night, the Raps had won seven of their last eight games. Yeah. Two wins, uh, the last two wins have been against some pretty good teams, the Spurs and the Magic. Yeah, the Magic. You know? sure. So what has been the key for success for the Raps thus far? Well, you know, going back to the beginning of the season, it was all this thing about, you know, the, the team's dysfunctioning and not, you know, they're not, they're not playing well. And a lot had to do with the fact that, and I said this earlier on, that these are new players, 10 new guys, and it takes some time to, you know, come together, if you will. And I think now we're starting to really see teammates understanding each other, understanding what the coach wants them to do, and systems are really put in place here. So I think that, that's a huge piece of it. And then of course, players naturally start to play better as the season progresses. Is Chris Bosh the greatest rapper of all time? That's the question. Greatest? I still yeah. say Vince. I sure. say Vince. Based on what? His impact. Like, uh, Vince took the Raptors farther than Bosch did in the playoffs thus far. So I think that's the measuring stick thus far. So even, think, though, even though Chris has got more in terms of number wise, in terms yeah. of the Raptors record books, and I think he's, so. he's, he's more prominent in the record books than Vince Carter is. No, I still, I still say, say, I still say, when you think Raptors, you still think Vince. So Toronto is Vince's town. I still think you that's, have that's the great, up on your wall. hey, I still have my number 15 jersey, man, with the purple dinosaur, the Barney dinosaur thing, man. You, you got the Vince bobblehead above your bed. I right still now. have it, I still I have, have it. it. It's, it's true, it. but I still say Vince. When you think Raptors, you think Vince. So what does Chris have to do, in your mind, to overtake Vince Carter? Go to the second round, that'd be a nice start. So win some big games, man. Win some big games. Like when Vince was in town, like when he played, remember that game, no, that series against the Sixers? Okay. Him and Iverson, sure. 50 point games sure. up against each other, you know yeah. what I mean? Sure. Bosh hasn't done anything like that in the postseason. You know what I mean? Like play big time when it counts. You know, that, okay. that's what I'm thinking. So if Bosch goes off like, I don't know, 30 and 20, that's not big time? Regular season. Uh, when it no. counts. When it counts, man. When it counts. All when right. it counts, postseason. Okay. All right, okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right, all right. I'm just saying. I just think that. Just saying, just saying, just saying, just saying, Another reason why I think the Raptors were playing well is because at the start of the season, their schedule was pretty jam-packed. They were playing like a bunch of like back-to-backs and sure. some pretty tough teams. So it just seems like the schedule is easing up on them right okay. now a little bit. Okay. So I think that only helps. Okay. You know? Makes sense. Makes sense. Guys. So everybody remember, check out whotheman.com. They are always great. Uh, check out the website, uh, thembabreakdown.com. And guess what? See you later. Easy, y'all. Take care.